I'm talking about the easy stuff now. Talking about, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about drug addiction. If you truly want to be delivered from drugs, cry out. Yeah. Lord help. If not, the chain won't be broken. As soon as you get a little crawl a little bit away, they'll snatch you right back. Yeah. Pornography, same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pornography is one of the biggest uh, uh, downfalls in our uh, men of God than ever before. Yeah. Than ever before. And, and we, we crawl a little bit away from it, be good for a few days, few months, couple of weeks. Next thing you know, snatch yeah. right back. Why? Because we didn't cry out. Yeah. Lord help. And we don't cry out afterwards. Cry out in the temptation yeah. before it overtake you. Mm -hmm. When you know you're about to crawl into that little space where you normally go. See, before you get up, say, Lord help me. Don't let me. Deliver me right here. That's a good place. But in the fact that you do crawl off, God is still able to deliver you on the other side of it. He can say, He can say, but you gotta sincerely. Don't let it be the shame of the sin that you cry out. Because once the shame is gone, you go right back to it. Yeah. It's gotta be the hatred. You gotta hate the sin. Because sometimes shame just means I'll cover it. When we shame about something, we'll if, if recovery not shame no more. But when I hate something, like I hate lip, I don't care if it's in the broad daylight in a closet underneath the broom. Uh, 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 I don't care where they serve it at. I don't care where I, I hate it. But if I'm just shame or something, I'll cover it. And as long as it's covered, I'm not shamed. So if you want to be delivered from something that you're ashamed about, learn to hate it. Mm -hmm. Ask God to help you. Cry out to him and let him deliver you. Because this is the thing that will keep you bound. When you're supposed to be before the Lord, you're out doing the things that, are, that, that God says I'm not pleased with. When you're supposed to be have your mind purified and, and, and so that he can speak to you, your mind is now grappling for things that you're not supposed to put into your gates, mm -hmm. your ears and your eyes. And so this, I, I don't know why I went there, but that I just want you to know that this, this word today is about people who want to be delivered, mm -hmm. who want to be set free. This is, this is the God is waiting on you. He's not going to take no toy from you. Even if it's a dangerous one. Mm. Even if it's one that, that may take your life. He's not going to take it from you. you got to freely give it. Lord, I don't want this. Help me. This is dangerous to me and my soul. And some of it is dangerous to your whole family. Because we leave our, our family unguarded to sometimes activate and be involved in these things that bring us pleasure. Verse... Uh, when he says he'll snap the chain, my other great uh, statement here is, let them praise the Lord for his great love and for his wonderful things he has done. I want that to be, I'm going to put that up on my page this week. Those two things. Verse that says, Lord help, they cried in their troubles, and he rescued them from their distress. And then after he does what he promised to do, let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Throughout this entire passage of scripture in uh, Psalms 107, that's those two things that keep standing out. Yeah. He keeps saying that you got to cry out. And then he, after he does what he has promised to do, he says, now praise, now glorify. Now, you know, this is, I believe, our strength. No, tell me somebody who's weak in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Who is in danger in the presence of the Lord? Nobody. Who who what, what devil started something in the presence of the Lord? Mm -hmm. No, nothing. Not. When the presence of the Lord enters the room, it arrests everything. Yeah, bro. The presence of the Lord will bring everything under subjection. Every knee says what? Bow. Every tongue. So when the presence of the Lord shows up, everything is subject to the Lord. 
But we have to invite them in. How do we invite them in? With our praise. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we declare his, when we sit around and just talk about the da 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 da, the, the downs, the this, the that, that's what that's what gathers itself around us. That's the stuff that gathers itself around us. But where's the praise? Where's the how God brought us over? How God brought us out? How God did this and how God did that? That's the praises that invokes the spirit of the Lord into the place. Mm -hmm. And now everything is subject to Him. Some of us, I got to get our homes in a better place. Just by opening up our mouths and giving God the praise. And I ain't talking about praise God because I ain't about to have all this around me today. That ain't giving God the praise. No. No, I'm talking about that sincere worship. Mm -hmm. That the sheer, that, that sheer declaring his word, declaring his glory in the house. Because some folks have a negative thing to say. This is what you come back with. What what God says. Mm -hmm. And ain't no tip for tat. It's just that you don't know my God like I know my God. This is what he's done for me. I'm testifying. I don't have to tell Job's story. I have a story of my own. Mm -hmm. Now, Job's story is all right. That's good. But see, I, I didn't lose all my children like that. And I didn't lose all my wealth. I ain't had none. But I'm going to tell you how God did for Sandy Powell. Mm -hmm. Then Sandy Boy. How he brought us home. I got that story. He brought us, I'm going to tell you, a mighty long way. And I ain't talking about no material things. I'm talking about as a person. Yeah. I'm talking about me as a, as a soul. As a human being. Took me from a woman that would not care whether you live or die. Mm. To my soul aches for everybody that I come in contact with. That's See, that's the power of God. Trying to tell y'all something. <laughs> Woo. Verse 16 says, And he broke down their prison gates of bronze, and he cut apart their bars of iron. Some were fools, they rebelled and suffered in their what? In their sins. And they couldn't stand the thought of food and were knocking on death's door. But what happened? Lord helped. Once again, the Lord came. He sent out his word and healed them. And snatch them from the doors of death. I got multiples here. It says here in verse 25. He spoke the winds rose and stirred up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens. And plunged again to the depths of the sailors. As the sailors cringed in terror. They rebelled and staggered like drunkards. And were, uh, and were at their wit's end. But verse 28. But Lord help. Mm -hmm. And he calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. What a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely into the harbor. See, even in the midst, we can be out there on the wave. Some of us are out there right now. We're on the wave of life. Storm is raging. We don't even have enough sense to cry out, Lord help. We think we're going to be able to maneuver this ship to shore. We think we're our own captain. We think we're the, we're the one who's going to be in charge of our life and we'll be able to make it happen this way or make it happen that way. But I'm telling you, the winds and the storm will beat against your ship. That's good. That's good. If you don't learn to call out, Lord help, the waves can take you over. And you can find yourself like these sailors did at their wit's end and at the doors of death. But God can snatch you back. He said, I snatched them back. And safely. See, some folks think that take me off the take me off the waters. No, he's not gonna take you off the waters. But he'll safely maneuver you to the harbor. He'll get you to your destination. He'll pull the storm. He'll make the winds calm. That's the kind of God we serve. We gotta find our place of calling on, on, on the name of Jesus. Some of us pick up the phone, we think people can make things happen for us. Sometimes we need to go in the prayer closets. Yeah, yeah. Call on the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Sometimes it ain't the favor of men. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to recognize God and the power that he possesses. Praise him in that, in that prayer room. Don't always be in there asking for stuff. Give him glory. Magnify him. 
Sometimes we just complain too much about where we are in this life and not remember where we used to be and where God has brought us from. Mm -hmm. Some of us was in the dumps. Sometimes I open up my eyes, I, I, I almost can't recognize. Like, Lord, how did you get me here? From where I was. What, and it just seems like it's a whirlwind sometimes. Or how he has fast forwarded me. And it all comes from uh, trusting God. Recognizing where he brought us from. Mm -hmm. I look back over my life. I truly, that song is just exactly what it is. I think it over. I can truly say, I got a testimony. And many of us do. We have a testimony. We have a word that will lift the heart of another soul. We can tell them about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done. We got to open up our mouths, mm -hmm. cry loud and spare life. Somehow we think that scripture just tear folk down. No, cry loud and tell about the goodness of the Lord. Tell people what God is able to do. Give people hope. Because some folk are thinking that they're stuck with their, their demons. They don't know the power of God. They think that this thing has uh, has been uh, beat, has been whipped. But we, we, we know. Those of us who have been delivered and walk in deliverance and many things in our life, we have to know that God is able and we have to tell people so that they'll know. Amen. Some people think they, they, they got to be subject to everything that mm -hmm. comes their way. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't. I found out a long time ago, and this is to our single women, that, yeah, it's nice to have a, 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 a companion. But I learned this. That God is the greatest companion. Yeah. I learned that in singleness. God is the greatest companion. That singleness is a time of oneness with God. That don't, don't despise it. Embrace it. Let God work in you a good work. Doing you a, a good thing so that when you come to this place of marriage... That you will be that much further down the road. I, I can testify to that. That even in the matter of, middle of having a partner or something. It can be so bad that you don't really want it anyway. Come on. I'm talking to you. Let's go to verse 32. And I'm about to close out. This was so good for me. I, I, I wanted you to hear. Because I... It, even in our isolation, or, or, or where we're getting a little bit more out there now, but even in our, in our still, our somewhat isolation and our somewhat uh, quarantine homes and stuff, people are so overwhelmed and consumed with the thing that haunts them. And uh, that's not a focus point. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to sit back and think about the thing that haunts you. Yeah. The vice, the sin, the ungodly things that haunt you. But I'll give you the sign this week. I want you to sit back and think about what the Lord has done. How he has blessed you from one interval to the next. And although you've got some stepping to do and you still got some things that God needs to work out in you, if you give him praise, if you give him glory, if you testify of his power, cry out to him. Cry out to him about those things that plague you. There's only one God that can deliver you. There's only one God who can set you free. There's only one God who can make it all better. Only one God who can snap. When I heard that word, I said snap. That ain't even like, that's like a, you know. It's like a simple thing. You know, when I snap a pencil, you know, if I break something, I'm going to have to put some work in. I'm 
bad piece of work when breaking something. But when somebody say, hey, snap, that's like, it's no big thing. What's that? Snap them chains. Snap the chains. Mm. We don't have to be in bondage. But he's waiting on you. And he's waiting on me. We have to cry out to the Father. Do this. Love what he loves. And hate. Even if the sin exists in your life, I want you to hate it. Don't love it because it's attached to you. Don't love it because it's attached to you. Don't because that's not self-hate. That that thing is not a part of you. Yeah. It has attached itself to you, but you were formed and made in the image of the Father. And that wasn't part of it. Somehow that got attached. Mm -hmm. Hate it. Hate it and cry out. Because one day you're going to cry out and it's going to be a sincere cry of help me. Help me, Lord. And he is going to snap. Hey. And I don't care what the experts say. I don't care what the head folks say. God's power supersedes man's logic mm -hmm. and man's understanding. And some things don't take 12 steps. Some might have to do a 12 step. Cry out. Let God work it out. Mm -hmm. Let him show you the steps it's going to be. Don't let someone else dictate to you that this has to be this way. Cry out and let God make this call. Let God decide in your life how he's going to snap it. Mm -hmm. But first we got to hate it. First we have, excuse me, we be prepared to let it go. To offer it up. God, I don't, I don't even want this. Yeah. It's attached itself to me. That's the acknowledgement you have to make. This thing is attached itself to me, God. But I hate it. Mm. Like I got this little bowl on my face. You know, I hate it. It's, a, it's, it's here, but it doesn't mean I love it. I hate it. It's going away, too. I'm going to get rid of it. God. That's what I'm going to do. That's what God is saying to us in the same instance. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Cry out. I'm crying out. Dr. David. <laughs> Verse 32 is my final scripture. So, sorry, I got two other scriptures after that. Verse 32 is the final part of this though. It says, let them who us exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of this nation. Saints, this is our time to cry out before the congregation and before this nation. Why? So that they will know our God. They will know who we serve. Because we got a lot of folk got a lot of diss on our God. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of diss on who we serve. They have no respect for our Father. We read it up there sometimes. We didn't have it in times past. Mm -hmm. We were scornful. We know better now. But at one time we didn't know better. We used God's name in vain. We cussed and had his name mixed up in it. We attached his name to ungodliness. We attached his name to foolery and foolishness. We did that too. But now we go back and look how God brought us over. How God delivered us from that. And now our conversation and our words are a different thing now. And he says that we have to do this thing publicly. What does that mean? My life has to be like some people think, I'm about to roll my eyes out for a roll. You did when you said, I, I, for Jesus I live, for Jesus I die. You did. When you accepted his son as, as Lord and Savior of your life, you automatically became a role model. You automatically now publicly are making a statement. Whenever you declare yourself to be a Christian, you automatically are making a public statement. Mm -hmm. Now what we're doing now is making sure that our statement line up with our actions and that is all one smooth move. He says we have to do this before the public and before the leaders of this nation. They need to know that Christian believers are here and that we have a voice and that we're declaring God's, uh, even when it comes down to our president, I'll say this publicly. I don't agree with the current president on everything. And I didn't agree with the former president before him. 
on everything. But I did pray. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, he's still present. So if he's already in position, how about getting up under him with some prayer? Because he is not too far that God can't reach him. He's not too far that God can't uh, touch him. So we all have a part to play. We can all just throw stones and, and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, he's still the president. Yeah. And decisions have got to be made. So how about this? Go straight to the top. Mm -hmm. Go up over Trump's head. Go up over his head and pray to the Most High God that he will touch his servant here on the earth in the U.S. of A. And give him some wisdom. The same prayer I prayed for the previous president. I went above his head and prayed to the Most High God that our president at that time would walk away from abominations. Same thing. Verse 42. We'll jump all the way down. This is kind of like the wrap up to Lord help me. And, and, and why uh, this is so relevant to us as believers. Verse 42 says, the godly will see these things and be glad. There's going to be troubles, sorrows. There's going to be uh, uh, famines. There's going to be trouble in the land. There's going to be uh, people live in a, in a bad state. Some die. There's going to be uh, turmoil. There's going to be disappointments in this life. See, those things we have to, to, have to actually accept. There's, there's just nothing we can do with that. This is not a perfect world. It's going to be heartbreak and heartache. He says, but this, we have a role to play as believers. And verse 42 says, the godly will see these things and be glad, while the wicked are struck silent. See, when we see things that are not necessarily going the way we want to go, we still have hope. We know our God is in charge there. We still can pray to a most high God. We still can pray to a heavenly father and, 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 and ask him to do something. Mm -hmm. But when the wicked see these things, see, they're, they're, they're stricken silent. They, they don't have an answer. See, we have an answer. Mm -hmm. They're brought to silence because they don't have a God. They don't have the God. So they have no words. They're silent because they're, they're, the situation is bigger and the only thing they see. When situations come my way, that's not the only thing I see. I look past that and see my father. Lord, what are you going to do about this? This is your thing, God. I'm leaning dependent on you. I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be independent. I love being a dependent of God. Amen. Amen. I love being a dependent of the father. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want my independency. No. Verse 43 says, those who are wise will take all this to heart. All what? That when we're in trouble, the one that I set myself in, the one that I didn't. The one where the storm just rose up, the time when I was in rebellion, the time when I gave in to foolishness when God told me not to. All of these things. I'm going to take all of these things to heart. And I'm going to remember one thing. I'm going to remember this. God, mm -hmm. you are my deliverer. You are my savior. You are my focal point. Yes. Get, some of us got to get our mind off of things. We focus too much on the thing. We focus too much on the issue. We focus too much on him, on her, on it, on that. We focus too much. We're not focusing on God. We haven't called down the power. I thought about that little thing. Remember that little guy that used to say, Shazam? Mm -hmm. And then he would turn, you know, and the hit was power all over right, the place, right? right. That, well, see, some of us, that's what we need to do. What big Shazam? You know, this is it. Call on the power. Right. Some of us act like we don't have a God. Mm. And not just a God, the God right. of all gods. I'm always going to remind us who we serve because sometimes we forget. 
We forget in our actions. I can tell the by the way some folk act. You, you forgot who you serve, don't you? Uh, you, you do know you serve God, right? Uh, okay. Well, okay, I understand we get in places where there's moments of depression and sadness. I get it. But some I, I have been in that place. Been saddened by life circumstances. But my mouth is saying this. To God be the glory. He's going to raise me up out of this one. He going to break, snap, not break, snap the chain. A lot of my depressions was because I was focused on the issue. The moment I put my eyes on God, it brought my gladness. It brought my happiness, my joy. The moment I found myself in the middle of a praise, I owe all, some of the sadness went away, and I was able to lift my hands. See, sometimes we got to break away from looking at the issue and the circumstances and praise God, give God a glorious praise. Talk about the goodness of God. It says here in that final part of that verse, it says those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithfulness, love of the Lord. That's what our testimony will do. Our testimony tells the world our history of how God loves us, how he brought us over, how he brought us out. Even in this moment right here, I, I miss the saints, but I'm not worried about God bringing us out. He did it before, and he'll do it again. He did it this time. I remember he did it when my mama was raising her children. My mama probably can remember when her mama was raising her. Every mother here probably has a testimony that we can go back in our mind and think about how God made it work. Look down at these little baby faces that we were raising. We had no idea what we were doing. Thank God they made it. Amen. We had no idea. But we look back and God is with us in every situation. He's been good to us. And I want us to open up our mouths because this is what the Father said. He says it's on us now. He's proven himself to be the God of all that there is. He's proven himself to be a good Father. He's proven himself. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? What are we going to declare? What are we going to give up in our, in, in our praise? What are we going to do? Are we just always going to sit back and say, oh, we don't mind? Or are we going to say, but I didn't have two pennies to work together. I, I didn't have two pennies to work together. He fed me. When I thought I was losing my mind, I was such in a state of depression with a big old smile on my face. But I felt worthless and the most unloved I've ever felt from human beings. God showed me a love that I will never, ever be able to express. I'm literally talking about when folk turn their back on you and speak all back of evil against you. God let me feel a love for him that was most powerful, that lifted me so high. Lifted me not only from a despair place, but lifted me enough to see the love that I need to have for the very ones that hated me. See, that's powerful. He let me know that the cares of this world don't matter. The only thing that matters is what's eternal. That's souls. So I give God the praise and the glory on this Mother's Day. For being the mother, friend, sister, aunt, wife that I am today. Because I had no sister say, Lord, help me. So I'm testifying today. 
than you two. No matter where you are, no matter how low you think you are, no matter how far you feel from God, He is not. He says it's on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to call out to me, Lord. Help me. Lord, help me. He wants you to turn it over to Him. He's ready just to take it from you and snap it. Snap those chains. And after He does so, I want you to give Him praise. Give Him praise. Let Him fill your space with so much love that the hate melts. That's all we got to do today. Come on, let's just give God a praise right now. If you say, Lord, I need you to deliver me. I need you to set me free. I need you to take these things from me. See, this, we don't need an altar at a church. We need the altar of your soul. All you got to do is say, God, I want deliverance. I'm tired of being in this mindset. I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of this thing wrecking my mind. I'm tired of feeling bad uh, in bondage with this thing. Deliver me. All you got to do is cry out right where you are. I don't care who you're sitting next to at home. I don't care if you, you ain't got to hold them no front. Say, deliver me, God. Deliver me on this day, this Mother's Day, May. Take, deliver me. I give it to you. I give you God the vice. I don't want this thing anymore. I give you the hatred. I give you the anger. I give you the lust. I give you the despair. God, I didn't. I give it to you. I give you the power. I give it to you. Because you know it destroyed my life. I'm a, I'm a private man. Deliver me. Set me free, God. You will not hold me in bondage, God. Deliver me. I'm saying this is the day. We don't have to wait to come back to the church to have revival in our life. We can be revived today. We can be set free today. All we got to do is just begin about bed and who's around us, the church will go in and lift your hands to God. Say, Lord, help me. Begin about everyone else right now, Lord. I can't pray for them right now. I need you to help me. Help me that one day I'll be able to help someone else. Help me, God. Deliver me, God. Set me free, God. Set me free, Lord. Go away. But if you believe God, I promise you, 
He will open up that sideway door that you not fall into that place of darkness. Trust it. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, in the pardon of your sin. I'm telling you, this day is for you. This Mother's Day, you can be birthed into newness of life. Say Lord. You can be born again. All you have to do is say, Lord, I am a sinner. Say Lord. I am lost. Forgive me for my Lord. sin. Hallelujah. Deliver me. Lord. I accept your son Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I accept you. That's my own. Thank you for saving my soul. I receive your Holy Spirit that will lead, guide, and direct me. Amen, in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, I want you to know salvation is yours. Salvation is yours. This is your time now to just establish your relationship with your Father. And you do that by reading your word. Reading your word. Stay in tune with your pastor. If you don't have a pastor, keep watching to the church where you can join. Because it's very important that we have the relationship with the saints and with the pastor, the man or woman of God that will speak into your life. The word Until then, I just want to say God bless you to everyone. Thank you all for tuning in today. Keep praying for one another. Keep your head lifted. You're serving the Almighty God. The Almighty God. 